In this video, you're gonna learn some pro tips on how to configure Palo Alto Global Protect portals and gateways for a multinational company, with a focus on geo-redundancy and optimized performance for their global users. Hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Ricardo. I'm the founder of NetSums, where we help security professionals level up their skills. In today's video, we're going to walk through a consulting style scenario with a new multinational customer. They operate six data centers across three continents, located in New York, Vancouver, Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, Frankfurt, and Amsterdam. Their goal, to enable secure VPN access for all the employees and also some security providers from all across the world. First, we'll define a solid concept for the Global Protect portal, the entry point for all VPN connections. Then we'll move on to design the gateway architecture, making sure it's redundant, scalable, and optimized for performance. So let's dive in. So guys, in order to design the portal, we're gonna assume that in each data center that the customer has, there is at least one firewall there. So we have Frankfurt, you have Amsterdam, you have Rio. In order to be able to offer a robust solution, he's a client, we would need a solution that is offered through DNS. So we have my DNS server here. My URL would be vpn.mycomp. Com, for example, this would be the URL that the user would enter. I would not want that the user enters vpn.rio when he's in Brazil or vpn.frankfurt when the user is in Europe or something like this. I would like that the user only has to memorize one URL and doesn't matter where the user is in the world, that will be able to access the best available portal for them. So in this case, there are some DNS providers that offer some service such as GSLB, which means Global Server Load Balancing. This is a DNS service that offers health checks in general, and also some load balancing, like let's say geography aware services. It means that the DNS server, whenever it receives a query, it takes a look at the source IP address. It means the IP address from the client and the answers with an IP address from a server that's the closest from this client. For example, the DNS server would have a list of all the, the files around the world, but if I'm connecting from, let's say I'm connecting from Berlin in Europe, the DNS server would give me the IP address from the file in Frankfurt, which is the closest one to Berlin. Could be also from Amsterdam, but not the one from Rio, for example. So regarding the source IP address, I would get the IP address while resolving this name, vpnmycomp.com, I would get the IP address from Frankfurt. And in this case, I would be connecting to Frankfurt and my connection to the portal would be established. I could authenticate myself and everything. As I mentioned, this DSLB also offers a health check. It means that you would notice if the file in Frankfurt is still available or not. And if it's not available, it's not healthy anymore. It would give me then using DNS, the IP address from the one from Amsterdam, which is the next closest one. It's still in Europe. Both of them are still in Europe. Or if I have other files in the same data center, you would give me the IP address from the other file. But important thing is you would do the monitoring of the files. The monitor can be using HTTPS, which would be the way that I would do to monitor if the file, if the web server for the portal is working, and if I'm getting an answer from the portal. And if the portal is not answering anymore, so the DNS would mark this file as not available and would not give me the IP address anymore. I want to show you also one problem that I had with the SAML authentication while offering two IP addresses from DNS. Maybe it's interesting for somebody. It was, was a hard thing to find the solution. Maybe it helps someone there out there. Identity provider, IDP. It's like Azure or Enter ID, for example. Let's suppose it's Enter ID. And in my DNS server, I configured two statical DNS entries. I mean, statical, there was no health check. There was no, it was just static and the DNS server was doing some round robbing. So it meant the client was trying to connect to vpnmycom.com, connected to the DNS server, got the IP address, let's say it's the phase one, and they got the IP address from Frankfurt. Let's say this one is Frankfurt, and this one will be the one from Amsterdam, yeah? This is how we configured back then for some tests with the client. So it was connecting to Frankfurt, and Frankfurt was saying, hey, I have here configured SAML authentication. This would be the two you need to go authenticate yourself with the identity provider. So it was going to Microsoft, to Azure. I was authenticating, Azure was giving the answer back. And this kind of authentication is not the file that speaks with the identity provider, it's the client itself. The file has a certificate from the identity provider, so you can check the SAML responses, 
but the client itself is responsible for connecting the identity provider and answering back to the file. So it was number three, the answer was coming back from the identity provider. So the client was supposed to connect the file again, but the Glue Protect client does again another DNS query. And in this query, of course, 50% of the time was working because the client was getting the IP address from Frankfurt again, but the other 50% was not working because the client was getting the second IP address, which was not the first one that it connected before. So in this case, the client would try to connect to Amsterdam in this case and saying, here's my SAML response, let me in. And in Amsterdam, the file in Amsterdam was saying, who, who are you? I don't know who you are. And then the connection was not possible. And this was the, the error message that we were getting while uh, trying to connect for 50% of the time, of course. Just a parenthesis, just to explain to you that this kind of solution I've tried before without any dynamic DNS and it worked for LDAP because LDAP, you don't have this connection going to an identity provider, coming back and two connections. You just connect to the file, the file connects to, to the LDAP server and verifies, okay, can this client authenticate or not? There was no two connections. But as soon as we configure SAML, then we started having problem with this configuration. If you'd like a cheat sheet or a connection sheet from the Palo Alto file, head to netsamps.com slash resources and get yours for free. So this was the portal. Now let's see how we can configure the gateway. I'm gonna head to my panorama. I already have a portal configured and I just want to show you how I would configure my gateways on this portal. So I'm under network, Global protect portals. And I'm gonna click on the portal that I already have. Go to agent. Here I'm gonna click on auth or on my configuration that I have and go to external to configure my gateways. I'm gonna erase this one. And I would start configuring my gateways. First, I need to see this is something that I didn't say. Let me just go back to my drawing. So here on my drawing, the certificates, that's something that I didn't mention before. I would have my Frankfurt file and my Amsterdam files and all of these files I would have for them, for all of the IP addresses, one DNS entry, vpn.mycom.com, which would give one IP address from each of these files. For the files, I would have another DNS name called, let's say, uh, gw1-fra.mycomp.com. For Amsterdam, I would have gw1-ams.mycomp.com. I would have this configured on my DNS server. In this case, let's say that I'm configuring this on AWS, and I would have this configured in AWS. These entries pointing also to the same IP address on my Amsterdam or on my Frankfurt files. I could have two different IP addresses, for one for the portal, one for the gateway. I don't see a big problem in configuring both of them uh, under the same IP address. In this case, I would use one IP address for both of portal and gateways, but with different, different names. And of course, I would need in each of them a certificate with this name as a subject alternate name, S-A-N, from the certificate. And there I would have this name, and there I would have the other gateway name. For example, for Amsterdam, gw1.amsmycomp.com. You could, I've done this for clients, business, little smaller clients, to have one certificate for all the files. It's a big list of SANs, SAN I entries, but it can be done. But in this case here, I think I would go for the option to have one certificate per file, or at least per location, that I have GW1 AMS. If I have a second file in, in Amsterdam, I would call this GW2 minus AMS.mycomp.com. And this is the way that I would connect to the gateway. Let's go back to the file now. So here in my file, I would create one external gateway for each gateway that I have in the world. So it would mean, gw1 minus fra.com.com, copy this. I usually give the same name as the FQ, FQDN for the file. And here in the source region, I would choose Germany. This one is the one in Frankfurt. And I'll set the Germany to highest. Belgium. Let's suppose that this client has some offices in Germany, in Belgium, in Spain, and in or to in France. 
And I say that these are supposed to connect to Frankfurt. And I just enter here any as a medium, maybe, or low. And press OK. So every, everybody else would be able to connect to this gateway, but having a low priority. I do the same for Amsterdam. GW, GW1 PMS mycomp.com. Copy this, paste here, Netherlands. Highest, what else? Belgium is actually closer to there. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Denmark, highest, United Kingdom, okay. And any, leave any as low. I'll do a third one and then I'll stop. GW1 minus Rio dot my comp dot com. So now the explanation. When my users connect or try to connect, they would connect to all of these gateways and measure the time that it takes for them to make the SSL handshake. This is how a gateway is automatically chosen with Globe Protect. If I'm in Germany, for example, let's say I'm in Berlin, I would connect to my Frankfurt file, I would connect to my Amsterdam file, connect to my Rio file. Connect, I mean, make an SSL connection, an SSL handshake. And then my client would measure, okay, how long did it take? Probably the connection to Frankfurt would be the fastest one. Could be that the one in Amsterdam would be the fastest one, but very unlikely it would be the one in Rio. Furthermore, I set my priority to Germany as the highest in this case here. In this case to Amsterdam, I don't have Germany here. So Germany would, would fall in the category of any in this case. So I would be connecting very fast to Frankfurt with the highest priority. I'll be connecting, let's say fast to Amsterdam with a low priority. And I would be connecting slowly to Rio with a low priority. There's a high chance, very high chance that I will be in Germany connecting to my gateway in Frankfurt. If my gateway is full, because these files also, they have a limitation of how many toners they can support. I haven't tried this in practice, but I've read some documents from the Palo Alto that says that you get a message saying that the limit has been reached from this gateway and the, the Globe Protect app or the client will try to connect to another gateway. So it would mean that if this file here has reached its limit, the connection will be possible through Amsterdam. This is what, what we want. This is more fine tuning what I did here with the highest with the, with the countries. You could leave all the gateways here. You do have to list all the gateways here, but you could have left them as any for them or any, everybody has any highest, for example. And you let the client decide by itself which gateway it wants to connect. You would go through this SSL handshake measurement and you choose the best one. Usually the, the automatic choice works well. I haven't had problems with it. I see that they connect to the closest one most of the time. Um, it does work. But in this case here for this customer, I would try to do some fine tuning for at least some of the countries that try, are trying to connect where the customer has some base, where it has some offices or something that I would configure them manually here as a list, a small list. It doesn't have to be something huge. Let's say in order to help the decision to the right direction. And this is how I would configure the gateways for this customer. And the last thing I would, I would like to mention regarding the, the firewall high availability configuration, you can have here, for example, in Frankfurt, you'd have a second firewall here. I have a first firewall and I have a second firewall. Let's say I have two connected in, H, in HA, in high availability, and I would configure one as a active and the other one as passive. This is a classical configuration. The disadvantage of this configuration is that you only have one firewall to use. Only one firewall is active, as you probably know. The limitations from the Palo Alto files sometimes low, in my opinion, regarding the number of clients that are allowed to be connected. Even though the newest files have a good CPU, a lot of throughput, the limitations regarding the amount of Globe Protect clients are, in my opinion, still kind of low for, the, for what the file can. And another option that you could configure would be to configure these files as standalone. I would be a little bit careful with it. Because the advantage of having active and passive is that when the active fails, the passive takes over and usually the Globe Protect client doesn't really notice that there was a failover. 
because the, the Glue Protect client connects, tries to connect to the gateway with the same IP address as it was connected before without the user having to do anything to enter the portal. It happens in the background and the user usually doesn't notice that the connection is being made again. But on the other hand, instead of having two files here in high availability, I'm just throwing it out there, this kind of thought. If you had here single files, the scalable just better than the high availability one. For example, if you need one more file, or if you reach the limit of one file, you can have a second one, you can have a third one. You cannot add a third one to the, to the high availability, for example. You'd have to get two more files. So in the end, you are paying double for the same performance. Let's say like this, when you compare to a uh, standalone file. You already have the, the redundancy for the portal being done by DNS, and you have the redundancy from the gateway being done by, by the portal configuration, where you have the whole gateways there listed. The disadvantage is if one file goes out of, has a problem, let's say this file here has a problem, the GlowProtect users would notice that the connection is down and they would have to click on the connection to connect again to a new gateway. And the whole process of doing the hand, uh, SSL handshake with the gateways, the client would have to go through all that again because it's changing the gateway. The gateway is not the same anymore. But of course, the advantage is the cost. You have uh, less cost. In my opinion, this would be something that we could talk to the, to the customer. It depends. The customer can choose. I don't know. I prefer. How often does a file has a problem? And even if a file fails, it can be that the customer says, for me, it's no problem if the users need to click on connect again and wait for one minute for something that happens maybe once a year or even less than that. It can be that the customer says, I would, I would rather uh, save here. I don't know. $80,000 or $100,000 and have 100 people clicking on connect and waiting for one minute. Maybe for the customers, it's a good invested money for them or saved. Talk to your customer, of course, getting written that the customer decided to do this. If this happens, there was a decision of the customer and everything like this. But I like to go open to the conversation with the customer and not say, okay, this is the solution. Uh, active, passive, everybody does it. We do the same. I like to be open to new opportunities and new options. And I just wanted to show you this one that I would consider. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching the video until the end. If you're interested in watching these videos one week before it goes public, sign up to netsums.com slash join to be part of the community and get early access to the videos. I hope you got some value from the video from today. And maybe this video here can help you further with the Palo Alto configuration. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.